Alright, Shopify here. So we're gonna start a new series and I'm gonna be calling it Tiny Game Tuesdays. So in this series we're gonna be creating really small games and I'll try to upload one maybe every one to two weeks. So for our first game, we're gonna create Brick Breaker. So to get started, for all the games that I'll make during the series, we're gonna be using the Game Boy Colors resolution and that resolution is 160 by 144. Okay, so for input, we're gonna need left and right to move the player or paddle left and right, and then we're gonna need a fire button for certain upgrades, as well as the pause button to pause the game at any time. Okay, so let's first start creating a prototype. First, we need a player, so I'm gonna use an area 2D for the player, and then for the ball, we're gonna use a character body. I know it sounds backwards, but let's see how that looks. So first, let's create a player. Let's give it a speed and then we're gonna in the process function we're gonna get its direction so we're gonna use and um, get axis from the input so we put left and right actions and now we could use that direction and then times that by speed to get the velocity on the X and now we could just increase that position X by the velocity times delta then we clamp its position to be within the screens area so from half its width to the size of the screen minus half its width and there we have it our little player correct now for the ball but before that let's go back to the project settings and go to the window we need to increase the size of the window itself so let's multiply those by five so the size will be the pixel size will be the Game Boy color size and the window size will be five times that size okay so now for the ball the reason I choose a character body for the ball is because we have some convenience functions built in so for example we have the is on ceiling is on wall and is on floor functions and we could use those to bounce the ball around so first we'll need a direction and then we'll need to update its velocity so we need a speed and then we multiply the direction and whenever it's on the wall we check we invert its x direction for example if it's on the floor we invert its y direction and on the ceiling we invert it as well That's the same as before to be the negative of the y and with that now we need a wall and ceiling and a floor so we're going to use a single static body for that and we're going to create shape collision shapes at each end right off the screen or right at the edge of the screen on each side and that's our wall or bounce i mean and there you go now we have the ball bouncing around but it's completely ignoring the player that's because the player is an area and we need to do some code to track the ball if it touches the player so the way we're gonna do that we're gonna check if the ball enters the player remember the player is an area and then that way we could tell the ball where to go next so for example we're gonna use the player center as well as the ball center so we're gonna get this direction so we're gonna tell the player to check what direction the ball is in and then pass that direction to the ball we're gonna make one change to that direction now we're gonna inverse the uh, X based on how far to the left or right the ball is to the player that way the ball bounce in a more realistic manner so if it's closer to the center we could make it go the opposite direction or not or vice versa or if it's further up we make it just bounce back to the same direction all right so that looks perfect we could work on it a little bit later on or work on it some more okay so let's move on to creating levels so the way we're gonna do that is that we're gonna use pixels on an image and we're gonna use various colors to just track what uh, color block we need to place and where to place them on the level and the way we're gonna do that I'm gonna use a sprite to do it and let's just create a level really quick this is gonna be level zero just to test and we're all we're gonna do is loop through those pixels and then assign assign a color to a block and then assign a position to the block based on where it is on the grid on the pixel grid it works perfectly wait a minute what's going on here so after a little bit of checking i realized after turning on debug collision shapes i was setting a block for every single pixel so the main idea is if a pixel is transparent we completely ignore it much better okay so now let's create some sprites and the background for the game so here i have a background and then i create a sprite for the player or the paddle and then the ball and just one single sprite for the bricks we're gonna change the color of the bricks by changing its modulation okay so now let's apply these sprites and we need to change back their scales back to where they were because we created the sprites to be pixel perfect there you go much better now let's just create a few levels it'll just quickly go through these all right and that should be good enough for now now we need a way to track uh if a level is complete so the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna do a count we're gonna use a globals uh script and then we do a count up of all the bricks that are in the level 
then we're gonna just add the count to that add a brick and then we could remove it whenever we break a brick so after that's complete we can now increment the level the level number and then we just say load next level remember we're not loading a new level because it's just one scene we're just changing the path for the sprite for well, the path for the image of the next level and then we reload we're actually just reloading the scene sort of okay, let's create the creator ui we're gonna just need a, a health label and a score label and that should be good for now all right guys so let's create a quick menu we'll just give it a title screen and a play and exit button might not use the exit button but just add it there and then on the menu now let's add a pause menu so a pause button resume and then a game over screen to add the game over then uh, retry and exit and that should be it for the menu all right now that the game's done it's a bit fun as is but we need some upgrades so it's more fun to play so what we're gonna do is we're gonna create four upgrades and they're gonna be an expansion upgrade and a reduction upgrade where you get scaled up and down or stretched out a bit or the reverse then we're gonna add a uh, firing weapon like you can shoot the blocks and then we are gonna add multiple balls so we're gonna just allow up to two balls at the same time so if you get the same upgrade again you just get some points and then that's about it okay so for the expansion and reduction it's pretty simple so we're gonna use the shape of the block so we're not going to actually scale the actual object because scaling with a collision object is not good so we're just going to scale it up and down with the actual shape of the collision for the weapon we could just call it a blaster we're going to just use the same icon and put it on the player itself and we could just use that and then with the fire action button that's the space bar we can just fire out a projectile we could just use any like we could even use the ball and just make it black uh, we could use that for a weapon then for the ball to have multiple we need to have a tracker so instead of the game being over we need to like just delete a ball whenever it falls off and if it's only one ball left that's when you get a game over so that's pretty easy to do let's change up the code a bit and there we go now to get the upgrades whenever we hit a block we're gonna check if there's a chance that the block will drop an upgrade and if it is then we spawn an upgrade at its position and then that upgrade will slowly come down to the player and if the player touches it it checks what group it's in and then get the upgrade from that point and that should be it so i'll just throw some sounds in here and then you guys could check it out on maybe uh hio and I'm going to leave the source code on GitHub for you guys to check out. It's going to be one um, project that contains multiple projects. So keep an eye on that. I'll keep updating it each time I do a new video. Thanks a lot, guys. Uh, if you like it, like and subscribe and see you in the next video.